This occurred when I was about eight years old and lived with my family in Brazil. My aunt was in the hospital for liver issues and everyone in the family had accepted that she would not be around for a while. Since our house was bigger than my other relatives, everyone decided that it was best for her to stay at our place. Later on, she transferred to the hospital and my mom and relatives would take time to visit her. Just to give some background, my family can be a bit superstitious, and my mom was no exception. Since everyone knew that my aunt couldn't be saved, there's always this dark feeling lingering throughout the house. Due to this, I always got scared to go to the bathroom at nights. I shared a bed with my sister, and it was the only way I had a peace of mind to fall asleep. On this particular night, I could feel myself almost pissing my pants. My dad never liked any of the lights on because of the expensive electricity bills, so I was always afraid he would yell at me if I turned them on. My only hope was to wake up my sister, but she was so deep in her sleep and didn't wake up no matter how many times I pulled out her hair. I couldn't hold it in anymore and decided I was going to try and make a run for it. I was going to run to the bathroom which was down the hall, pee and run right back. Now, in Brazil, I should note that houses are closely situated. Our bathroom was next to the kitchen with large windows, and my neighbor's porch light dimly lit our entire kitchen. This was always calming to think of, since I knew I wouldn't be in complete darkness after all. I jumped out of bed and ran to the kitchen, opened the fridge to grab a piece of fruit, and ran into the toilet. I'm sitting on the toilet, peeing and eating when I suddenly hear a crackling noises coming from the kitchen. Since my mom would wake at around 4.30 to cook and travel to my aunt's hospital room in time for breakfast at 6, I figured my mom must have been awake. I called out for her, but nobody answered. After the crackling grew continuously, I looked over at the kitchen clock. I didn't know how to read time proficiently yet, but I could tell that it was somewhere around 4 a.m., I got a bit scared and tried to look closer into the darkness. And that's exactly when I saw the shadow of a woman staring at me. I could barely make out her face as the kitchen was dimly lit from the neighbor's porch light. The thing is, the woman's body shape appeared to look exactly like my mom's, so I remember saying, Mom, do you need to use the bathroom? In Portuguese, of course. But the person never responded. I figured she was getting ready to go visit my aunt, but was just a little bit tired. The figure kept staring into my direction. I couldn't see her eyes or face. I just knew that whoever it was, they were looking at my direction and had a womanly figure. It's fair to note that all this occurred in under three minutes as I was done peeing. I got up from the toilet and said, Good night, Mom, and ran back to the bedroom. As I was running down the hall to the bedroom, I looked back and saw her turn facing me as she sat down at the kitchen table. I went back into the room to see my sister still asleep, and I cuddled up against her and fell asleep right away. The next morning around 9am, I woke up to my mom cooking in the kitchen. I ran to her to ask how my aunt was and to ask what she was cooking. I told her I saw her in the kitchen the night before and asked why she hadn't said anything to me. My mom's face suddenly looked very puzzled, and she kept asking me to explain who exactly I saw. She looked very worried, and called my father and kept asking me if I was sure I wasn't dreaming. I insisted to her that I wasn't, because I knew that I was wide awake and had really experienced this. My mom later told me that she had asked the nurse to stay with my aunt all night in the hospital, and she wasn't home all night and that my dad was working night shift so my sister and I were home alone. And this scared the living shit out of me, because I knew that I saw someone. I knew that I wasn't dreaming. My mom believed in paranormal stuff, and told me that it could have been an angel coming to bless our house since my aunt was in the hospital. But I don't believe in any of that stuff, not even as a child. Still to this day, I can't figure out who that woman was 
staring into my direction and not saying a word. So this actually happened to me, I believe about a year ago, and two at most. My friend Tate had moved, and eventually I went up one weekend overnight to visit. Now, Tate and I liked playing video games, watching movies, but we also really enjoyed going outside and exploring. In his old neighborhood, there was a creek we would explore around for hours, so the next morning when we woke up, I asked him if there was anything like that around his new house we could check out during the day. To my excitement, there was. About a mile or so from his house is a 7-Eleven, and adjacent to it is a huge field that leads into some woods. We got some drinks, and once traffic died down, we crossed the street to the field. At first, I was a bit let down because this wasn't anything like the creek, and it seemed somewhat boring until we got to the end of the field, which is where the woods start. So we climbed down, and now we're in the woods. Nothing unusual at first. I saw a fox dash through the trees and escape into the opposite direction of where we were heading, so I wasn't particularly worried. Now, these woods were pretty creepy in themselves. It wasn't anything huge, but small things that were out of place. There were styrofoam coolers littered on the ground, broken lawn chairs, a tire, broken glass, and a white tank top tied to a tree. It was just really strange. We joked about how people must come down here to drink, or how someone must have gotten into a car accident and now lives out there or something. Eventually, we get deeper into the woods, and to the far right of us is a house. It's not in the woods itself. It's pretty far off, but you could see it from where we were. Honestly, the house looked like complete shit. It was old and looked like it was breaking down, and there was a long ladder leading to the roof. On the ladder was a man wearing a reflective orange vest and baseball cap, so we couldn't see his face very well. It also wasn't that close, but he saw us. He stared at us for a while, and we kept moving forward. We eventually get to basically the end of the woods, we reached fencing which separated us in the woods from streets and cars. My friend had to take a piss, and after 30 seconds, we decide to head back to his house. I was a little disappointed because the creek at his old house was much more entertaining, and I liked the water. We were walking and talking, and got near the house we had seen, when we heard leaves crunch somewhat behind us. We turned around, and it was the man from the ladder. He didn't say a word. He just stared at us. He wasn't necessarily close, but I had a bad gut feeling, and we turned around and started walking quickly towards the field. We hear twigs break and leaves crunch behind us, and I turned my head as I was walking to see that it was the man following us. He was following us, and again, not a single word. Both times when I turned and saw him, he didn't continue to walk. He stopped and stood there. At this point, we're basically sprinting, and we run up the incline to get back onto the field and out of those woods. After we got onto the field and saw cars in the 7-Eleven, we both felt relieved and we stopped. I turned around to face the woods, and he was there again, right at the edge of the woods, staring at us. He didn't climb out and get onto the field, and again, he never communicated a single word. He just stood there, staring. I took a blurry Snapchat video on my phone, and I thought I saved it, but I can't find it. I'm not sure if you even can share it on Reddit. It was far and zoomed in, and all I could capture was his blurry face and baseball cap. To this day, I think about what could have happened in those woods. Tate is a couple years younger than me, and I'm big, but I'm not that strong. And this was a grown man. He definitely could have tried something if he wanted to. For the life of me, I can't figure out what his intentions were. If he was trying to scare us, or if he would have actually hurt us, or done something perverse if we didn't start running. Instead, all he did was stare. I 
I don't even know where to start this story. I was kind of young at the time, around seven or eight, but old enough to know what was going on. I lived in a pretty decent neighborhood, but my family was in the process of moving. There was a large mixture of families with children and retired seniors living on my street. There was a neighborhood babysitter who took care of my younger sister when she was too young to go to school. She also happened to babysit me on multiple occasions. She was always kind of rude, a pudgy lady with two annoying sons and a very weird husband. A lot of kids got taken care of by her, so my parents trusted her to take care of us. Everything was somewhat normal, except the fact that she was kind of rude to anybody who wasn't her kid. Her kids were pretty misbehaved. They were always fighting, hitting each other with plastic swords and screaming at the top of their lungs. At one point, the younger toddlers had a nap, and she forced all of the children to sit in a corner and be quiet besides her kids. Odd behavior for a babysitter, but we never thought much about it. Another thing to mention is that she took naps while babysitting, as in she didn't pay attention to the kids at all. She just shooed them away and fell asleep. She was notorious for giving her sons delicacies and telling others they had to just settle with water. My sister and I tried to ignore it, but eventually we got pretty annoyed. My sister had a loud mouth, so she told my mom about how she treats the kids she babysits versus her own children. I'd also like to acknowledge that my sister had just turned four, so she wasn't great with words. My mom was angry that the babysitter did that, but let it slide as we were moving in a month, and she didn't know if we were being completely honest. The house we moved to is the house that I spent a large majority of my childhood and teen years in. Things were pretty normal once we transitioned into the new house, until we started getting the calls. We changed our phone numbers, so we weren't sure how the babysitter and her husband found it so quickly. She called every day, saying that we needed to pay her, and that we owed her money. She was just angry that we had moved, and were currently on the lookout for a babysitter that was closer to home. My parents received these calls every day, and they consisted of the babysitter or her husband screaming, which meant I could hear the voicemails and calls clearly. They kept harassing us, and my parents grew agitated and worried. It all ended one night at around 10 p.m., when my sister and I woke up to the sound of banging on the front door. It continued for a good 10 minutes, and was very loud. My sister was freaked out, so I decided to go see if my parents were awake. They were. They were just opening their eyes, kind of confused as to what was going on. My dad told my mom to stay upstairs, and he foolishly went downstairs to get the door as I stood at the railing nervously. My sister stayed in the bedroom because she was unaware as to what was actually happening. When he opened the door, I felt sick and terrified. There was my babysitter and her husband, who had managed to find not only our phone number, but also our address. The husband started screaming at the top of his lungs, yelling, You owe us money! Pay us now, and shaking a knife. Yes, he had a knife in his hand. My dad told him that we didn't, and warned him to leave unless he wanted the cops to be called. He didn't care. My dad went to close the door, but he stuck his foot in to open it, attempting to get inside. My babysitter was also yelling, but I couldn't understand what she had said. We had a phone upstairs so my mother quietly called the cops as my dad struggled to get the door closed. Once he did, the banging and screaming continued. They wouldn't leave our property. I was freaked out, so I started crying. My sister saw me crying, and she did the same. Long story short, about an hour after they left, the cops finally arrived, having just missed them. My parents knew their info based on the fact that they babysat us, so it wasn't hard to track them down and they were arrested immediately. I always wondered if their children were home alone or had a sleepover, especially at a time so late. Regardless, they were released a few days later, but were not allowed to step foot near our house. I'm not sure if the woman still babysits, but if she does, I feel terrible for those kids. We never really knew what their intentions were that night. 
My dad saw the knife and knew they were up to no good. All I can say is, psychotic babysitter and her husband, let's never meet again. This encounter isn't as creepy or intense as many of the stories on this sub, but it was still pretty weird, hence why I'm posting this. I'm an 18-year-old in high school, and was a member of my school student council last year. On council, we usually helped plan and set or clean up for events such as dances, fundraisers, and the like. We did so in teams of two. A bit of backstory. My school is in a pretty good area, and it's close to a lot of new stores and housing, so it was kind of area where moms took their kids after school, and the elderly came to chill during the day. Naturally, the teachers and staff were a reflection of the people there. Sure, there were the usual complaints from students, but there was almost nothing out of the ordinary about anyone here. Almost. Except for John. John was this typical creepy and rude custodian, who many other students had stories to tell about. I never really paid much attention to those stories, since they weren't coming from anyone I really talked to. But based on what I heard, if you were to see John and his partner or friend Linda, you'd get some serious creeper vibes. Since I had to plan for events, I was working late at school one day when I accidentally got locked out of the student council room. No biggie. I just have to find a custodian to unlock it for me. I walked to the nearest one, an overweight mid-fifties man, and asked him for help. Being fairly social, I made small talk on our way to the room. I asked him about his plans for the weekend, and he replied with nothing and asked me in turn. I told him I would be volunteering for the annual school carnival tomorrow, and his expression immediately went from friendly to menacing. Oh. Is that so? He asked, unlocking the door. He said nothing else and just began to stare at me. This was weird, but nothing I hadn't seen before, living in a bad neighborhood and everything. The next day, I had completely forgotten about the encounter. Me, being the extra person I was, had decided to bring a designer sweater to the carnival. Of course, I soon learned that a carnival full of children was no place for anything fancy. Walking into the empty school, I headed towards my locker upstairs. Hey, you! Someone yelled. Expecting it to be only the principal or vice principal who I knew fairly well, I laughed and turned to greet them, before seeing the custodian from yesterday rushing towards me in a tackling stance. He was running at me faster than a bargain hunter at a Black Friday sale, so I immediately booked it up the stairs. We had a fairly long staircase, and he was thankfully out of breath from running this far, so he didn't follow me. You can't be here, he yelled. Get out! Normally I'm not much of a rebel, and I like to follow the school rules, but when someone's screaming and chasing at you, you don't really stop to think about that. I ran up the rest of the stairs and down the hallway to my locker. That must have been John, the weird new janitor, I thought to myself. A week later, I had forgotten about John again. I put it off as him just taking his job patrolling the school a bit too seriously. It was club day at our school, which my friend Mina and I were in charge of. We were bringing tables from our cafeteria to the forum for an event, when John came up to us and told us to be sure to clean up afterwards. Now that would have been normal, except then he would start telling us about all the stuff that would happen if we didn't and how every day the custodians had to pick up after the students. You get the idea. After five minutes, he kept talking, and we only had half an hour or so left to set up, so I made some joke about how we'd clean up and try not to burn the house down, hoping it would go away and let us finish. That didn't go well with John. He started yelling at us about random shit, about how teenagers these days had an attitude problem, and asked me if I was on drugs. I thought he was kidding because in my mind, no adult would have seriously asked that to a 16 year old. And being the joker I am, I said something along the lines of, well I just finished some skittles, so yeah I guess if you consider tasting the rainbow a drug. John apparently had no sense of humor, and had not tasted the rainbow before because he kept yelling. When I say yelling, I'm not exaggerating, 
This guy was yodeling at the top of his lungs incoherently, adding some bitch which my friend and I could not understand despite being in English. I then realized that maybe John wasn't all that sane, and all those stories had been told for a reason. Finally, after finishing, he told us he'd be keeping a watchful eye on us and left. You'd have thought by now someone would have come in from all the commotion, but then I remembered that the cafeteria was soundproof, of all the places we had to meet John in. This was already my third time interacting with him over a span of seven days, and I began to think that maybe it wasn't such a coincidence that he had happened to find us while we were alone. I told her how weird John was, and jokingly told her how I'd have to post this to Facebook and give a bad review to the cleaning service, just like one of the many typical soccer moms I had friended, who I was always seeing ranting about this kind of stuff. Of course, we both knew I was kidding, as I'm one of those people who never use social media, but most people who didn't know me wouldn't have known that. I grinned, expecting a laugh from my friend, but her eyes were wide and her mouth was open. He's behind me, isn't he? As it turns out, John didn't leave at all. He only went out for a minute before coming back to silently lurk near us. He was fuming. He ran at us and started waving his mop around in an attempt to mimic a Jedi with a lightsaber, yelling, you can't post that on Facebook. Tell me your name. We took a step back and I tried not to laugh. It wasn't every day I saw an insane guy running around like a stick-wielding maniac. I'm pretty sure it's illegal for school staff to add children on social media, I told him. And I don't even use Facebook. Stop making him mad, Mina whispered to me. John took another few steps toward us, and we booked it to the forum with him glaring at us through the cafeteria windows. After this, we debated whether we should continue setting up or not. Any normal person would have ditched, but we were running out of time and had to finish before lunch. He would just have to try and ignore him. After all, what was the worst he could do besides yell? We walked back into the cafe where John, who had now brought Linda, was waiting for us. We tried to avoid eye contact, and John sat down to watch us while Linda circled us like a vulture. You two have been causing some trouble, she said with a smug look on her face. I was starting to regret my decision to continue. Despite the cafeteria being made of practically glass, it was class time and there was no one around to see or hear us scream. They wouldn't actually do anything, right? I thought about running, but they were both close enough now to stop us with a tackle or a grab. I started coming up with an attack plan for a worst case scenario. Worst case, Mina and I get murdered in a school cafeteria in broad daylight, and the tables weren't even ready. Not an ideal result. Linda stepped up to me. I'm going to report you to the office, she said. Huh. Getting reported sounded much better than getting stabbed to death with a mop, which John was still holding upside down like a Jedi. Sounds good, I said. Let's go right now. Linda looked surprised for a second, but regained her menacing glare. If you don't stop sassing me, I'll report you. Yeah, let's go right now and you can report me, I said, the two of us backing out towards the door. Linda screamed, Shut up, or I'll report you. Suddenly the bell rang. We had gotten enough distance between us. Mina and I finally used some sense and ran out. Talk about being saved by the bell. We took a minute contemplating what had just happened, then remembered the tables. John and Linda had disappeared once students had started filling out of their classes, and we practically threw the last few tables out onto the forum. We considered telling our parents or a teacher about this, but what were they going to say? That a couple of janitors yelled at us because I couldn't keep my mouth shut? Aside from that, they weren't really doing anything illegal, so there wasn't anything anyone could do anyways. Another week passed. I was walking to one of my classes when I noticed John standing a few feet behind me. He was staring straight at me without blinking. I put it off as being a coincidence, until everywhere I went, I noticed that John was always there in the background. I told my friends that I thought John was stalking me, and they all insisted that I tell the principal. I initially shrugged it off, as I've had other people follow me around in my neighborhood but then I realized you might be following Mina too, or other girls as well. I asked Mina what we should do, and she was freaking out. 
like I had figured John was stalking her, too. Finally, the next day, we told everything to my mom and the principal, who could already guess which custodian I was referring to. After that, I never saw him or Linda again. Whether they were fired or decided to suddenly dip, I'm glad they're no longer at my school, and sincerely hope they're not stalking anyone else. I guess that's what happens when you don't taste the rainbow. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here as always. I just wanted to thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. Uh, I have a little bit of an update here for you guys. I uh, recently started streaming a little bit on Twitch. Uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in just hanging out and seeing a bit of gameplay of maybe Monster Hunter or some games like that, maybe a few horror games, but uh, I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description of the video below. As always, uh, if you guys like the video, please leave a comment or perhaps uh, like or subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you'd like to message me or you'd like to send in a story for me to read or you have a suggestion for a story I should read, the links to all of my social media will be in the description of the video below as well. This includes my Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, and now of course my Twitch account. Uh, go ahead and send me a message on any of those and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, please guys be patient because I do get a lot of messages so if I don't respond to you right away within like a week or two ju just be a little patient I'll get to it as soon as I can. If you do decide to send in a story uh, please be sure to include in the description of the email or message what the name of the story is, what the category of the story is, and how you would like to be credited in the video that the story appears in. Uh, if you guys are curious about the music used in this video uh, links to the music and the order in which the music appears will always be in the description below the video, so you can go ahead and check that out there. Uh, last but not least, if you guys do enjoy my content, please uh, take a look at my Patreon, and if you feel so inclined, maybe donate like a dollar or something. Every little bit helps. Uh, it'll never be necessary, but of course, it's always an option if you guys would like to support the channel. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.